Well, Lola, it's one of the most enjoyable things about uh, big championship occasions is watching the rival fans mingle and interact around the match venue. Plenty of banter, plenty of slagging too, but of course always conducted in the right uh, sporting spirit. Today is no different and Joanne Cantwell has been meeting some of those up for the match. But poor John O'Mahony finds himself surrounded by both Mayo men and women and also men and women from Donegal as well. But you won't mind as long as uh, it's the Mayo men who come out on top today, Absolutely. John. Absolutely. I'm certainly on this side of the fence, you know. Uh, 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 look, but, uh, but I'd have to say it's a, it's a brilliant day. It's two non-establishment teams and one of them is going to ho go home with victory tonight. And I just hope it's Mayo and I'd like to invite all of these people to Castlebar tomorrow night. <laughs> Sean, my Donegal friend, I'd yes. say you don't appreciate that. Well, I travelled three and a half thousand miles to see this game, and I think Donegal are going to get it done. Where did you come from? Uh, New York. And were there many people coming over for the game on the, your flight? The plane was full. All with uh, Donegal and Mayo people? Absolutely. There was one Mayo man sitting right next to me. Were you kind to him? I absolutely was, yes. And uh, how do you feel it's going to end up today? What are your like, plans for this evening? A uh, little celebration down the road and heading back on the plane tomorrow morning. But we do, we do believe Donny, Donegal is a fitter team. Donegal is a fitter team. John O'Mahony, that's something we've been hearing, that Donegal are the fitter team and that means that they're going to win. Well, if you look at the the uh, the last number of years, it's the underdogs that all, uh, always win. Donegal have done tremendous, Jim McGuinness has done tremendous, but at the end of the day, and all Ireland is a different animal altogether. So, there's, you know, something is going to happen in this game that nobody can predict, and it's all hopefully the ball is going to bounce. So, I mean, we have gone down those th that road on many disappointed occasions, but I, I just get a different feeling about today. I, I, I'm, I have been lucky enough to experience the winning feeling in build-ups to all Ireland's in the past where Galway won, and I think that's just like it's going to be for Mayo today. Wow, and can I just tell you that both sets of fans already have their celebration plans in place for tonight. Yeah, I think John will have to be reminded the ball bounced a couple of years ago on Mayo and Acosta in All-Ireland. But if Tony Gall win today's All-Ireland final, this team will go down in folklore in the county and will certainly rival the legendary status of those heroes of 1992. Or two of those heroes, of course, with the McHugh brothers, Martin and James. And there is that family connection with the present team, with Martin's son, Mark, a key member of the side. So we travelled northwest recently to see how the younger McHugh has coped with following in his father's footsteps. People, you know, recognise me more, you know, on, on my own as a player now than Martin McHugh's son. And it's something I had to deal with growing up, all right, Dad. But you know, I've never felt pressure or anything like that. You know, it was a privilege growing up, you know, to, to, to be recognised as that. It was just something that's changed now, probably in the last, you know, number of number of months more than anything. And it's, you know, something I'm enjoying at the minute. Slips one through, nice ball in. How is Mark McHugh? Will he take his point? Yes, he will. It's not fair, but people do judge you. But the interesting one now is that people are asking. At the start, it was, are you going to be as good as your father? Now they're saying, it's saying to me that your, your son's actually a better player than you. So <laughs> you do make, make it yourself, and he has established himself. And you have, you know, it's hard, not an easy thing to do. Picked up here by James McHugh. Nicely inside to Martin McHugh. They dovetail very nicely indeed. Wanting to make an impact on this Donegal's first final, and what an impact they're making. You know, myself, I definitely have a wee bit of a extra extra help at home when, when Dad's here and, you know, even James, when they're about, you know, they, they, they give you that wee bit of more help and they, they've been there, they, 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 they've done it and whatever leading up to All-Ireland final, they can get a bit of advice they can give me, you know, I'm probably going to take it. The build-up is different. You're out in the field a lot earlier. You have to meet the president and all that. There's a lot of that stuff, you know, when all of a sudden you're out there. It's different to semi-finals out there. They get going quickly, but the final is different. You know, you're out very early in the field, and you, it's really about enjoying it. And I think these fellas will enjoy it. And when the, when the ball's thrown and be ready to switch on. The Donegal fans on their feet, enjoying the moment, savouring every second of this. You know, those last, last few weeks have been, been, been immense, you know, and they've been, been you know, such a hype about the county. And it's uh, everybody's, you know, everybody wants to be talking, chatting about football, and, and it's just, it's, it's, it's great for the county. It gives a wee bit of a lift with the, the recessionary times we're running. He was born in 1990, and the cup came home in 92. He was two years of two years of age, and we probably sat in the cup at that stage, you know. And it's just, it's, I suppose, it's, it's a, from our point of view, it's a great story, you know. Win or lose the final, it's a great story. The fact that you know two of us were playing that him, and now we end up with, it. you know, there's still a connection. 
as I said, once you cross the line, it's going to be 50-50. It's going to be two very, very hungry teams who you know, haven't saw you know, the, the Sam Maguire coming down, coming down to their county in, in, in a long time. And it's going, to be, it's going to be 15 big battles out there, and whoever wins more battles is probably going to end up winning the game. These are the things we dream about in Donegal. And we've, we, you know, we've been in one, this is only our second final in the history of the G, 128 years. So listen, this is, what it, this is what it's about. And there's no bunch of players that deserve it more than this bunch of players for the work they've, they've put into it and the way they've focused and the kind of lads they are. They've, they've a word for everybody. So look at hopefully, please God, it works out. Dad's a great man for the stats, isn't he? <laughs> he comes up with all these dads. Well, no doubt there will be some uh, very proud members of the McHugh family if the Sam Maguire is heading northwest again tomorrow. And uh, speaking of Donegal, Colm Rourke has been looking, Colm, at uh, their kick-out strategy and how they use this. Yeah, well, in the beginning, I thought when you looked at Donegal that they kick, they just kicked the ball out. But it became very obvious from Paul Durkin in the game against Cork that they had obviously worked both on short and long kickouts, and they got a lot of good possession. The one thing that surprised me greatly in the semi-final, and something I did not see coming, was that Neely Gallagher would dominate so much in the air. Mm. To me, Neely Gallagher at times looked, uh, you know, quite a limited player. In the semi-final, I think he forced me to change my mind. He really dominated the air against Alan O'Connor that day, which was a fair achievement in itself. And Paul Durkin is not afraid to take chances, kick the ball short, and once Donegal get possession in their own back line, then they're almost impossible to dispossess. But in terms of a fielding exhibition in the semi-final, we haven't seen anything as good as what Neely Gallagher did in that particular game. And you can see as well as that, he set up scores as well. So uh, whatever chance Mayo have, Mayo have two very big men, Aidan O'Shea and Barry Moore, and it's very difficult to see that they're going to be beaten in the air. So maybe Paul Durkin will again go back to the short kickouts that he used so effectively against Cork. Some of those yeah. clips that we saw there, Pat, give the lie to the fact that the high fielding uh, aspect has gone out of Gaelic football. No, in actual fact, it's one of the highlights of this year's championship yeah. has been the display, the centre field displays. I mean, by by Aidan O'Shea the last day, um, Barry Morden was tremendous. I mean, there was a statistic from the, the, the Mayo's championship match against Leitrim. Barry Morden caught 19 kickouts. That must be a record for centre field. So, I mean, maybe a, a lot has to do with, with maybe placing more faith in the midfielders to win the ball because they're big guys. Mm -hmm. But number two also, now the good thing is with the referees, up to the last, up to this year when you won the ball at midfield it was a liability because you, when you came down you were swarmed and you were probably going mm. to be there was going to be a foul so there's, there's less of the swarming around fellas Could in possession now that. well in the middle of the field yes the, the swarming is back so there's, there's a little bit perhaps a little bit more space but the, the art of fielding is certainly sure. alive and well this year anyway it certainly is ok now most football fans like to make a weekend of it for the All-Ireland Finals and one of the big attractions of the weekend are the Kilmacott Croaks All-Ireland Sevens now they took place yesterday out in Stilorgan in South County Dublin and indeed just like our big match today it was Ulster versus Connacht in the final yeah! St Gaul's of Antrim and Corrifin of Galway went right to the wire with the teams finishing level well penalties followed and when Kevin Niblock scored the pressure was on Colin O'Dullivan to keep Corrifin alive but Antrim player Kevin McGorty saved and St Gaul's had won their fifth title <laughs> And so then Captain Sean Burke accepting the cup on behalf of his St. Gold teammates and congratulations of course to them. All right, we're heading to a break here on the programme. When we come back, we'll have much more in our build-up to this year's All-Ireland Football Final. We'll be talking to the Cork native who is hoping to taste All-Ireland success with the Connacht Champions. Now, we've already had uh, one All-Ireland Trophy presented here at Croke Park this afternoon. That was after today's All-Ireland Minor Final in which Dublin defeated Meath on a scoreline of 14 points to one goal and five. And afterwards, you saw there the Tom Markham Cup presented to the winning captain, David Byrne, of the Neve Olaf Club, not too far, in fact, from Kilmacourt Croaks that we were talking about a little bit earlier on. Now, I know a few Meath people watching over in Canada at the moment. They'll probably be a little bit disappointed with that. An old acquaintance, Anne Gogarty of the Wheelchair Association in Navin, is in Edmonton for the wedding of her nephew Patrick to Susanna. Hope you enjoy the wedding and, uh, of course, that you're enjoying our coverage from Croke Park. Well, lots of interesting spectators attending this year's final. One man, better known for his soccer prowess, Glasgow Celtic manager Neil Lennon. But he's actually also a former Armagh minor footballer. Joanne Cantwell met him outside Croke Park a little bit earlier. 
we find you here in what's called the Donegal House in St. Jones's Road, just said Croke Park. What brings you here? I got ambushed. I was on my way to the game and uh, about 40 Donegal fans invaded me in. So um, I'm here as a guest of the GAA. We're doing a, a little bit of charity work with you know, Maurice and my childhood coming. Well, I mean, it's, it's a very close game to call. I think both managers and coaches have done fantastically well. Um, I bumped into Jim. Jim was at our, one of our European games not so long ago, so I'll probably have a soft spot for Donegal today. Was he uh, asking you anything about the way Celtic train or anything like that? Yeah, he came, he came up and he had a look at our facilities and we just chewed the fat over you know, both our individual roles, at, um, what he does and what I do. And it was a great couple of hours, you know, he's a um, very intelligent guy and very insightful on, on all sports really, so he came across very impressively. So what way do you think it's going today? You, say, you obviously think it's going to be tight, but do you think they will just nip it? Well, I've been very impressed with Donegal. I've not seen enough of Mayo, but uh, to beat Dublin in the semi-final, it you know, takes a great uh, mental strength, and uh, obviously they're a very difficult side to beat. So, you know, it's all on the day. Championship, the first 15, 20 minutes will be vital. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. By hearing from a man who will be bidding for championship glory in the cover of colour Mayo, although his place of birth was much further south. Despite that, the team's centre-back is very much steeped in the fortunes of Mayo football and indeed like uh, many other people from the... I was at 2004-2006, um, I was in Hill 16 and the game was over after 10 minutes, you know, um, as a contest. Um, does it really have a bearing on the next day? I don't think so. For us, it's, it's game five. It's, it's about uh, making sure that uh, we perform to the best of our ability. And if we do that, uh, the game will go well for us, you know. My parents are originally, both my parents are originally from Cantork and County Cork. Um, so when I came up to Mayo, I was getting kind of joked about having a Cork accent. I go back to Cork and I get joked for having a Mayo accent, so it was a no-win situation. But, uh, you know, all my friends are from Mayo. You know, I'm Mayo, I'm Mayo at heart now, you know. And eight weeks after they contested the league final against Cork, it's Mayo's turn to the final. I was nearly as nervous before that you should win easy, and sometimes it doesn't plan out that way, you know. Different type of game. It was a battle, you know. It was it was a matter of hanging in there. But it, it, I suppose it was very very similar to the Roscommon game the year before, um, where you know we, we kind of hung in there. We were we were kind of chasing the game, but we didn't panic. It's a great moment for Mayo as the JJ Nestor Cup is given to the Mayo captain Andy Moore. Again, got a good performance there again against Down, 